Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I don't usually make videos like this, but I hope that there are a lot of things you can learn in this video about not only motivation, but success and getting through hard times and struggles. So let's just start where everybody's really frustrated. The Fed. The Fed reality is that we don't have control over the Fed. It's kind of like that feeling of being on a plane and there's turbulence or you hear like a weird sound. When you're a pilot, you're like, no biggie. Like, I, I can see everything that's going on. I know everything's good. I got all the little indicators. We's good. But everybody behind is like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? I, I kind of think that's how the Fed is today. And unfortunately, that leads to a lot of fear and quite frankly, depression for a lot of the people in the back. And the people in the back, those are Americans. Those are people around the world who are like, what the hell? Like, rates are so high. Things are so expensive. Inflation has taken such a toll on pricing. And yes, we know that maybe going forward, inflation should be lower. It doesn't mean prices are gonna get lower. Things are still hard. And it's harder to sell things because people have less money. And that sucks. Ultimately, we then kind of look at our own situation. We're like, hmm, my money's going less far. It's harder for me to get ahead because everything I want to do costs more money. It's harder to get educated to do something or like it's certainly harder to take on student loan debt or justify that or even just to sign up for practice tests to try to get a new license or something. All of that costs more. The opportunity costs are more valuable. On top of that, it's harder to actually sell new goods and services because everybody is feeling the same kind of crimp. So any business owner or entrepreneur is kind of frustrated right now. It's nearly impossible to raise money. Knock on wood, I'm still doing great with house hack. I'm just saying like in the whole venture capital world, we'll talk more about house hack in a month. Venture capital world is stalling. Not only that, but people who are employees have to deal with owners or managers who are more frustrated because maybe it's harder for them to meet payroll. Maybe it's harder for them to cut costs because there's a limit to how much you could cut costs despite the fact that it's harder to sell things. These are tough times. Like the tough times, sadly, might just be getting started. And that's probably the scariest part. We think, oh, but rates have been going up for 18 months. Yeah, but we all had a big cushion. You know, I, I brought this pillow here. That's the down pillow. And it's kind of like, you know, on this side, you got the pilot or J-Pow going, all right, boys, we're going to hit some turbulence. And you're like, no problem. I'm ready. <laughs> you know, like, all right, big deal. I got my cushion. But after hitting it so much, that cushion is kind of turning into a rock. You know, the cushion's going away. And so what you're left with now, it's kind of like, Ow, ow, <laughs> you know, like, what the heck? All right, now, now it's starting to hurt. So that's kind of the lag we talk about in monetary policy. The problem is that leads to more depression and more feeling of struggle because you can, like, it, it, let's put it this way. In America, we like to feel that the harder I work, the luckier I get, right? That's like the mantra of America. But what's the reality in this environment that we're in right now? Well, it's, I used to work hard and I got lucky. Now I'm working five times as hard and I'm getting half or a quarter as lucky, <laughs> right? So it's like, wait a minute, it used to be one for one. Now it's like five to a quarter. <laughs> this is not fair, this sucks. Uh, and so this is where what I'm finding and dealing with Contractors, 99% of them are great. 1% are total lame, but that's true in every industry. 99% are wonderful. 99% of the realtors we're working with are wonderful. Of course, there are problems in every part of the business world, right? 99% uh, of, of uh, the efforts of everyone are, are good intentions and people are trying to do their best. But the problem is you go into an environment like this, everyone's getting a little more tense. And I think that's ultimately what Jerome Powell is trying to get everybody to, because even if Jerome Powell is sitting there, which I believe they sit in their ivory tower like this, we know inflation is 
like forward inflation is gone. We know prices have come up a lot, but our job is not bringing prices down. Our job is stable prices. So I think the Fed is sitting there ivory tower going, <laughs> we have stable prices, yes. But we can't tell anyone that yet because as soon as we do, prices will become unstable again. So we'll just keep pooping on all the people, all the plebs. And it's like, huh. <laughs> Must be nice to be the Fed with the power of the money printer. It's probably the most powerful institution in the world. It's, it's insane. It finances wars. It finances the incentives for stimulus, for, for ESG, for EV, for whatever you want. Politics, you know, it all flows through this. It's insane. So problem is, as a normal, hardworking American, we are now bearing the brunt, and this could get harder, of... Oh, this is what they mean by inflation expectations. They literally want us to expect that, oh, they're, they're going to keep doing this until not only it hurts, but it like bleeds and break bone, breaks bones and keeps going. That's a risk. And it's something that we kind of have to look at and start preparing for. Of course, that doesn't limit the fact that we have a lot of other things going on in all of our own lives. None of us are solely waking up every day caring about the Federal Reserve. I'll give an example. I'm trying my best to dedicate more time as sort of what I call uh, solo daddy son trips. So I'll give you an example. Oh, here's a picture, by the way, of Max uh, sitting by the coffee machine <laughs> when we were making coffee in the morning. But uh, I want to show you some pictures here. These pictures are just Jack and Kevin. And uh, what we did is we just did a little daddy son trip. And the reality is I want to, you know, do whatever I can to work hard and keep working. Uh, and the harder we work these times, it's sort of like, okay, we're, we're working harder and we're getting less lucky in things. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we want to do everything we can to make sure we're still there for our family. Because really that's what matters. Like here's Jack fearful about going on one of these big slides that has that sudden drop off at the top. But I convinced him to go on it and he got, you know, he was, I had to bribe him with the Legos, <laughs> but it worked out. Uh, here's us having what I call wine together in the hotel at night, right? They, they, I think these things are really important, but they do, these, these occur in everyone's lives, whether it's uh, your time with your mom or your dad or your son or your daughter or your girlfriend, or your boyfriend, or even just your coworkers, because those are your, your friends and like your family, right? We can't work so hard while at the same time getting less results just because of timing. Timing is rough. And then just keep working hard to the point where we're not taking time for the people around us. And so one of the ways that I found to sort of balance this, because it's really difficult to try to work really hard, but then balance time for everyone. One of the ways I found is there's a difference between being present and being present. <laughs> no, that sounds complicated, but basically it's really easy to say, I'm gonna be there. And you're sort of like in the living room with your family all day long, but you're on the computer and you're walking away to do phone calls and your mind is really on studying or office work or whatever it is. There's a difference between doing that for let's say 40 hours a week and taking a 16 hour day where you go breakfast, lunch, dinner, fun, travel, parks, everything together with one person. Those 16 hours of pure quality time where you're not distracted by your phone or something else, that's worth more than the 40 hours of distracted time. So what I've done in my life is, and I'm not perfect about this, but I've tried to become much more intentional with my time. When I'm doing something, I'm turning off the other distractions. I've actually found my phone to be extremely unproductive. And think about it. You need to send an email. You're typing on your phone at like 25 words per minute. You have a keyboard and you know how to type. You know, you're typing 80 to 120 words per minute. It goes fast. Way, I mean, just that practicality alone is way faster. When you need to do accounting or QuickBooks or receipts, scanning documents, bill pay, whatever, it's all easier on your computer. Yes, is it? possible remotely on your phone. Sure. But then you're dealing with connection issues and everything's slower and you're switching apps and it's harder to do that on the phone or you're hotspotting and this is slow and that's slow. Like it's all trash. You know, people are like, oh, you know, you could do it on plain Wi-Fi, bro. You can't do anything on plain Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, it's like there, there's a time and place for everything. 
And the more intentional you are, the more capable you're able to be, and the more micro successes you're able to have. And see, that's something else that I think is really important is for me, I look at, you know, this trip that I had with Jack uh, as sort of like a micro success. Oh, this is them in the living room as, as a, a micro success of, okay, like, let's do more of that. Those are the things that I want to look forward to. Here's an example of where I did this with Max the week before. So one weekend it was Jack's turn. Then I, the other weekend it was Max's turn. This is us at sushi together, you know, reading Lego magazines together. Uh, what, what, you know, going to the Lego store as well, playing Legos in the hotel room. <laughs> here he is asleep. Cute guy. Uh, anyway, uh, boy here. <laughs> yeah, here's him being, uh, 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 I don't know what he is. Oh, <laughs> uh, here he comes. <laughs> yeah, you know, th these, these are great things. I think that we should all look forward to and we should try to be intentional about this. But beyond this, we have to have micro wins and micro successes in order to feel like it makes sense to keep going. So how do you do this maybe without children? Well, I'll give an example. You might look at the stock market and be like, this is freaking depressing. And it's just like, you just kind of want to like drink a beer or I don't know, for some people, maybe it's smoke or it's just go to sleep or not get out of bed or whatever it is, right? It's really depressing. Uh, but there's nothing you can do about that. Like there's, we talked about this already before, the fight or flight in the stock market, sure, you could sell everything. Is that the right thing to do to be emotional, kind of him haw? Are you gonna trade? Are you gonna turn your entire investing thesis upside down because you know of some temporary market fluctuations? Better thing to do, in my opinion, is focus on micro successes. So micro successes are something that I like to do with like test practice, for example. So right now I'm studying for a series 27, an SIE and a series 14. These, these are big tests, they're hard. And what I like to do is if I know I have to sit there and take, you know, 120 question test, practice test, I'm probably not gonna do it. Like it's, it's a pain in the butt, I don't like to do it. So instead what I like to do is I'd rather take like 10 to 20 little 10 question tests because I can bang those out really quickly and then switch and it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta win in. Like I got that win in. Now I'm gonna study a little bit more. I'm gonna read a little material. Now I'm gonna take another one. And that back and forth leads to more micro successes, which makes me feel like, okay, great. Like I got out of bed. I'm having a little micro test. Uh, okay, it's just 10 questions. It's not that hard, just get out of bed. But now I'm gonna go make a cup of coffee. And I'm gonna take another micro test, right? And that's really those micro wins. They work in a lot of things. They don't just work in practice tests. They don't just work with your family, but quite frankly, they work in almost everything. Little micro goals. Something you could do as well to kind of trick yourself with timing is set deadlines. Like, okay, I'm gonna meet this person at a certain time. Like it's gonna be, I'm gonna give a hug to my spouse or I'm gonna, you know, go to the park with my, I don't know, child for 20 minutes or I'm gonna go meet someone for coffee. Now all of a sudden the time right before that deadline, you're much more productive. When you have nothing on your calendar, surprisingly, <laughs> it tend to be highly unproductive. So now you have control though. You're setting these little micro deadlines. I, found that, I find that very useful. So these are like little, little things I find very useful. Uh, systems, very, very important as well. I mean, look, I'm running, people get confused by this. So I, I wanted to make a little map and it has to do with, you know, house hack. But I made this little chart and I think it's an easier way to kind of explain what I'm doing. But basically, this is my system right now. So I'm gonna take a little green pen here and explain this. So the community, that's us, right? That's us being able to share our frustrations in the comments. I read your comments and then I try to, this is why I'm making this video, I try to help and I, I want to add perspectives and provide value to maybe how, how you can improve. So love community. That has enabled us to create at a one-to-one -one valuation a fundraise for house hack, something that we think is an incredible real estate startup. It's not a read, it's, it's a real estate corporation that we think can have a very great valuation in the future. I mean, knock on door, knock on the door, we can't guarantee that. You should read the offering circular, be familiar with the risks of investing with startups and everything, go to househack.com. But it, that house hack system will enable us to create mini funds. That's part of house hack, right? These are house hack mini funds. So these are all the same companies. But in order to facilitate this, we're also running a secret project outside of Househack that will also help make this much easier for Househack. So that's why, you know, sometimes people they're like, oh, Kevin, here you are doing YouTube and here you are doing Househack and here you are getting these securities licenses. They all are laser focused on the same mission. I can't have 
really any of these be the greatest success they can be without the others. Now, if I start jumping, you know, throwing in there, well, now, now I'm going to become a professional fisherman. <laughs> you know, it has nothing at all to do. Well, then that's a problem. That's a distraction. And so that's worth bringing up. It's really important to cut out distractions and again, be intentional. So, and, and I, I hate saying this, but you know, a lot of people, and a lot of times we get told, you know, look, you want to have a happier life. You got to say yes. Just say yes to everything. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll help you with that. Yes, I'll go do that chore for you. Yes, I'll go on that trip. Uh, yes, whatever. You want to be a yes man, you know, yes person. You want to say yes to everything. But that's impossible if you want to be focused on your laser. Anything that is not focused on your laser going forward, you kind of have to say no to unless you have your own stuff together. And so for me... My laser is house hack and mini funds and building our community. All of those are a laser together. They all support each other because all of those aspects of house hack work in conjunction with our community and vice versa. So that intentionality is super useful. Some other things that are really useful as well. I found surprisingly sleeping more, maybe unsurprisingly for many, is actually really useful because you can be much more productive during the day. There are times where it's like, oh yeah, I can sleep five hours a day and I can function, but I would rather cut out and again, say no to something like, oh, let's go do an escape room at, you know, eight o'clock and go for a drink or whatever. It's, it's so easy to always say yes to that. But if you always say yes to that, you break routines and routines are already so hard to stay consistent with. So I'd rather go to sleep by say nine and then wake up at four, that gives me seven hours. If I can get you seven and a half hours is great. Now the next day, everything I do is much more efficient. It's really incredible. When you, when you rob sleep beyond say seven hours, you start going into five, six hours, your actual output declines. So you're awake for more hours, but maybe let's say you only got a hundred tasks done, where if you had slept the extra two hours, you would have gotten 200 tasks done. So now all of a sudden your output is exponentially higher when you actually have enough energy to do that. And that's where basic things like a little bit of cardio and really good nutrition are super useful as well. I'll give you an example with this. So if I wake up at, you know, four o'clock, but I was up until midnight, let's say, or 11 o'clock. That next day, I find myself kind of staring at the computer. I know I got to do, let's say, a practice test, right? And I'm staring at it with a coffee mug going. And, and so all of a sudden, it's like, it takes me three minutes to answer the question instead of one. So I'm answering questions 33% as fast because I decided to rob two hours out of the day uh, to give myself two more waking hours to work. But two hours out of the day is 8% of the day. So I'm getting 8%, but I'm losing, you know, 67% productivity. That's insane. It doesn't make sense. It's not a good trade-off. Now, until we actually think about it that way, it's like, dang, never thought about it that way. We don't actually value sleep, just like we don't value nutrition. I'll give you an example. You want to you want to prove how important nutrition is? It's actually one of the new Bruce Pro courses that we have uh, for sale. Go check them out. There are a ton of new Bruce Pro courses that give some really good perspective. Uh, all of those uh, will be released uh, shortly after a Black Friday before the end of the year. So in that sort of time frame, uh, and the price will probably be double by the time they, they come out. That's the expectation. But anyway, I'll give you another example. You want to prove how important nutrition is? Go uh, wake up, you know, you, let's say you have work to do at eight. And, you know, usually in the morning, we're really competent, right? We're capable. Don't, don't have, like skip your food in the morning or whatever. So let's say you woke up at six, seven, eight, whatever. You go to work at eight or nine, something like that. One hour after you go to work, not two o'clock, not lunchtime. Okay. None of that. One hour after you get to work, when you should be in like that really high productivity state. Purpose is you should be most alert and most capable right when you're starting, like an hour into your work when you're in that groove, right? Go to Red Robin, get a double burger, like, you know, double patty. I want you to load up on saturated fat, cheese, red meat, have some French fries, throw some mayo on there. 
You don't have to eat it all. I don't want you to stuff yourself. There's a purpose of this. Don't stuff yourself, so don't eat it all. But just eat enough to where you feel full, okay? Then put the rest down. Point is, now you've filled yourself up with nearly pure saturated fats. Obviously, there's some carbs and protein in there, but that's not gonna matter more than the saturated fats you just gave yourself. Saturated fats affect every single cell in your body. They tense up your cell membranes throughout your entire body. And guess what you will probably feel within an hour to two hours? Sleepy, groggy, tired, inefficient, incapable. Everything shuts down when you eat trash. Whereas like, you know, I feel pretty good right now. About an hour ago, I had like half a sack of these. I probably feel just as full, you know? This has 11, this has, this whole bag is 330 calories. That's insane. That's like three bites of a hamburger, of the double cheese hamburger I explained. But, uh, you know, I probably had a pound of these. So I feel pretty dang full. And I know I probably ate, overate on them, but there's no bad feeling that comes with eating veggies or fruit other than maybe a little bit of fullness if you ate too much, but it doesn't slow you down. It doesn't affect your cell membranes. So it's fascinating because these are little things, little refinements through your life that can make that struggle, the struggle of that lack of control of the Fed easier because now you're making micro wins. And if you can micro win, guess what you're doing? You're trying where everybody else is not. It is so much easier to just roll back in bed and give up because the market sucks or the Fed sucks. You just give up. Why bother getting a license? It's all rigged. Why bother trying? It's all gonna fail. Why bother making money? The dollar's gonna go to zero. You can make excuses all freaking day long, but you know what I like to do? I like to listen to everybody making those excuses and I like to say, thank you. Thank you for making the excuses because if you make the excuses, that means I can succeed more. And so that's what I really want to encourage all of my viewers to think about. And thank you for being part of this community too. But I want everybody to really think about that is the more intentional you can be during hard times when everybody else is struggling as well. Not saying you're not struggling, but everybody else is struggling as well. You start winning. Not necessarily right away, but in two years from now, when you've been working your butt off, being intentional and being really refined about everything we've talked about here, and everybody else just rolled around back into bed because they were depressed about the market. You'll actually be able to win while everybody else is like, how are you winning so much? Keep that in mind and good luck. Why do not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.